Hey everyone, thanks for joining the second Longer Burger Family Town Hall meeting. My name is Andrew, and today we're going to discuss how you can optimize your Longer Burger storefront. But before we get into that, I want to first do a quick recap on what we covered in week one. So if you recall, we talked about how you can start the Longer Burger onboarding process, and you can do that in two different ways. Way number one is to go to the URL longerburgerfamily.com. And once you get to this page, make sure that you're on the sign up tab, which you'll see here in a second. You can enter your email address and your password, click sign up, and then you're up and running. Way number two is to go to a storefront that is already set up, um, a stylist that you already know whose team you would like to join. And once you get to their storefront, you can click on join my team and start the onboarding process that way. If you take the second approach, once you complete the onboarding process and start making sales, you will generate a 5% marketing fee for the team leader every time you generate a sale, in addition to the 20% marketing fee that you will generate for yourself. So pretty cool. So remember, if somebody introduces you to the program, make sure you find their storefront and click on the join my team button to start that onboarding process. Um, we also talked about creating your storefront URL. So this is one that I created last week. And as you can see here, the URL is longerburgerfamily.com forward slash Andrew Baskets. And we also discussed adding products to your storefront. So as you can see here, I added two products to this storefront, the universal product link, and also this Windsor rug. So this is where I want to start off um, this town halls meeting, um, discussing adding products, deleting products, and, and how you can better optimize your storefronts for the products that you want to add. So let's say that Longer Burger products um, or Longer Burger releases a new product and you would like to add that new product to your storefront. How do I do that? Well, if I scroll down to the bottom of my storefront, I'm going to see this button, Manage Storefront. And if I click onto that, it takes me into the dashboard area. On the left hand side, on the dashboard, you're going to see these different tabs. And if I scroll over each tab, it highlights that tab in blue. The top tab is called Products. And once I'm selected onto that tab, you'll see here on the right hand side all the products that I've added to my storefront so far. So far, so the Longer Burger Universal link and also this Windsor rug. If I wanted to add a new product, all I have to do is click on this blue button. And then on the next page, select the merchant. I'm going to pick Longer Burger. And then once this page finishes loading, I can pick a product that I would like to add to my storefront. So let's just say that I would like to add this Yorkshire five piece flatware. I can click onto the plus button. And once it's finished thinking, I can then go back, click on the view storefront button look at the front end of my storefront and you'll see that that product is added to my storefront. So the most recently added product shows up first. So I just added this flatware product and now it's showing up first on my storefront page. So that's how you can add a new product to your storefront. If I go back into the dashboard, I can also delete a product very easily. And the way that I do that is just by simply clicking onto the trash can icon here. So if I wanted to delete this Windsor rug, I just click onto the trash can icon. I have to confirm that I want to delete it. It may take a few seconds, maybe even a few minutes to um, be removed from your storefront. But once you do that, that product will be removed from your storefront.
The next thing I want to show you is the share button that you can see here next to the two products that I have added to my storefront. If I click onto this share button, once the page loads, you're going to see that I have a unique link for this particular product. And if I copy and paste this unique link into a new tab, you'll see that it goes directly to that product page for that product that I just added. Okay, so this is a way that you can direct your customers directly to a particular product or directly to the universal link and bypass the storefront. So rather than your customer coming first to the storefront and then clicking onto the flatware product and going to Longer Burger that way, they could go directly to this product page. Um, and there are a few different um, scenarios where this could be useful. Um, if I navigate back to my dashboard, we can talk about those different scenarios. So scenario number one would be um, maybe you're doing a blog. Um, you have a blog and you're writing a blog post about a particular product and you want to send the readers of that blog directly to that product page rather than them going to the storefront first and then to the product page. Um, you could use this shareable link and include this link as a hyperlink in your blog and send them directly to that product page. Um, or if you were doing a newsletter, you could also send them directly to that product page or directly to longerburger.com through your universal link. Um, both of those scenarios would make sense. And it's actually, if you think about it, one less click for your customer that, that they have to take. Um, so this is a way that you can direct traffic to longerburger.com uh, without them having to go first to your storefront. Um, it really doesn't matter if you send them to your storefront URL or if you send them directly to the product page or directly to longerburger.com. What does matter and what is critically important is that your customers are first clicking on one of your links to get to longerburger.com. It doesn't matter if they go to your storefront and then click on the product or if they go directly from that unique link, directly from that shareable link um, to longerburger.com. Um, but it does matter that they're clicking on one of those links first. If they don't, if they just go to longerburger.com and make a purchase without first clicking on one of your links, you will not receive credit. So you must train your customers that they have to click on your specific link, whether they receive that link in an email or on a social post or in a text message, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that they click on your link first and then shop because if they don't do that, you will not receive credit. You will not receive that marketing fee for that transaction. Okay, the next way to optimize your storefront is to click on this tab, the manage storefront tab. Um, this is the thumbnail image that I uploaded during the onboarding process. If I now decide that this thumbnail image uh, is not that great or I have a better one, I have a better picture that I've just taken and I wanted to swap it out, um, very, very easy to do. All you have to do is click onto this blue upload thumbnail image button. Once I do that, this new pop-up opens. And like we discussed in week one, you can then find the file that's downloaded onto your phone or onto your computer and then upload it and it will show up um, in this thumbnail image position. You can also update the title to your storefront. And if I click onto the view storefront button, you'll see this title shows up in this banner. So if I wanted to update that to something, you know, uh, more, more meaningful or just something uh, a little bit different, 
The way that I do that is I just enter that new title into this field, click save, and then that will reflect on the front end of my storefront. You can also add a little description. So if you want to add a little bit of an introduction to yourself, um, give your customers a little bit of a background as to who you are, you can enter that text into the description field. Again, click on save, and that will reflect on your, on your front end on, on the storefront. And then lastly, you can enter your Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest handles, um, and also a Zoom link. We're gonna touch on this more next week, um, so I won't go into too much detail about this right now, but um, if you do want to add links to your social profiles, this is where you do that. Okay, so the next tab that I wanna cover is the accepted invitations tab. Um, if I click onto this tab, I'm gonna see everybody that has accepted my invitation and joined my team. So remember, if somebody clicks onto the join my team button and then completes the onboarding process, they have joined my team, um, they are part of my team and any sale that they generate, I will receive a marketing fee, 5% marketing fee for that sale. So if I go back to the dashboard, I can click on the accepted invitations tab and I can see their username, their email address, the date that they joined my team, their storefront URL, um, and then any pending earned and paid commissions. And we're gonna to touch more on those um, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, right now, I don't have any one on my team because I just generated, just created this storefront. But once you do get people joining your team, this tab is gonna look something like this. So again, you're gonna see the username, the email for that person, the date that they accepted, their public channel, and then any pending earned and paid um, marketing fees that they've generated. Okay. Um, next, we're going to move on to the sales and payments tab. And this is an important one because this is where you can see how many sales you've generated and, and how much money you've ultimately earned. Um, so I wanted to start off explaining what these three buckets mean, pending, earned, and paid. So pending is when you have earned, or sorry, when you have generated a sale, but that sale has not yet broken the return window. Um, the return window is just the time that someone has to return that product because Ongelberger doesn't want to pay a marketing fee on sales that get returned for, for whatever reason. So until your sale has broken that return window period, it will sit in the pending bucket. Once that return window period has ended, that marketing fee will then move over into the earned bucket. And the earned bucket, this is a stage where the sale has, has broken the return window. The customer didn't return their product, which is great, but you haven't yet received your marketing fee. So Indy will pay your marketing fees um, every Friday. So you will receive a email uh, letting you know that your marketing fee has been paid and those fees get paid out every Friday. So if this particular um, transaction broke that return window threshold, let's say on a Tuesday, um, the marketing fee doesn't get paid out until Friday, that marketing fee is going to sit in the earned bucket um, for a few days until it's been paid. Once it's been paid, it's going to move over into the paid bucket. So, so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you'll be able to track that flow going from pending to earned to paid. 
Moving down the page, um, you're going to see something called set up your payment method. Um, we're going to touch more, base more on this in, in future town halls. So don't want to spend too much time on this right now. But this is the way that you can enter the email address connected to your PayPal account so that you can get paid every other Friday, or excuse me, every Friday. Um, moving down again. Um, this is the, the total sales breakdown. So you can look at a 24 hour period, a seven day period, 30 days, uh, and also all time. And then moving down again, you can look at your SLM sales breakdown. So SLM stands for single level marketing. Um, and this just refers to anyone that has joined your team. So single level, meaning um, one person down. So the team member that has joined your team, you will receive uh, that 5% marketing fee and you'll be able to track all of their sales activity in this section of the sales and payments tab. Um, and then the last section, I'm actually going to move over to a tab that does have some sales in it. This is another storefront that I have created in the past. So as you can see here, I have generated um, $3.60 marketing fee, and this is sitting in the earned bucket. Um, so you can see that at the top of the page here. If I scroll down, I can see that this sale um, has occurred more than 30 days ago. So I can see that total amount here. Um, and the reason that that $3.60 cents in marketing fee is still sitting in the earned bucket is because as you can read here you have to earn more than $25 you have to break that $25 threshold before you can be paid so even though if this was more than $25 in a marketing fee it would have moved over into the paid bucket but because it's less than that amount it's still staying in the earned bucket so um, I don't have any SLM sales i don't have any team members on my team this is the only sale um, only marketing fee that i've generated if i scroll all the way to the bottom i can see the details of where that particular marketing fee has been generated in the earnings detail section um, so as you can see it was generated on this date the sale was for this amount which results in a marketing fee of this um, one thing I want to point out is that the products link refers to the link that the customer clicked on to make that sale. So in this case, they clicked on the peach salsa and actually made a purchase for $18. However, if the customer clicked onto this link and then went off and purchased a basket or a piece of pottery or whatever it might be, this link would still show the peach salsa link. So this link is just the link that the customer clicked on to start their shopping experience. It's not the ultimate link that they actually purchase. It's not the product link that they ultimately purchase. Um, so just be aware that this is the link that they clicked on to start the shopping experience, not the product link that they ultimately bought. Okay. So that's um, the sales and payments tab. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And um, that is the majority of the dashboard covered. Um, if I click onto view storefront, as I've been doing throughout this presentation, I can very easily toggle back and forth between the dashboard and the front end of my storefront. Again, this is my storefront URL. So this one is slightly different than I first showed you. Longerburger.com, Longerburger family, excuse me, dot com forward slash Andrew David Wakefield 
I do want to point out that this shop button here takes me directly to the products on my storefront. So it's just a quick and easy way rather than scrolling down, you can just quickly click on the shop button and it takes someone directly to the point where they can view all the products that they've added to my storefront. And then also the join my team button that we've talked about. If a friend or a family member clicks on the join my team button, that is a way that they can start the onboarding process. And if they complete the onboarding process, that connection will be made to you. And again, if they start generating sales, you will be rewarded in the form of a 5% a marketing fee. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, that wraps up today's town hall. And um, we're going to be doing these on a weekly basis. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for your time.